Welcome back to part two of our lesson on calculating electric field. In part one, we looked at questions one and two, and in this lesson, we'll focus on question three. Question three reads, calculate the magnitude and direction of the electric field at point Z in the figure below due to charged spheres at point X and Y. So we have a test charge here, and whenever we're doing these problems, the test charge is assumed to be positive. To do these types of problems, we need the following formula, where the electric field, represented by this Greek letter epsilon, is equal to k times q divided by r squared, where r represents the distance between the charges. So let me write that down for reference. We will first look at the influence of x onto z. Notice that this is a positive charge, and so is that one. So we will expect a repulsion. That being said, let's start filling this out. We have the electric field is equal to K, and that's a constant. Here I've written it as 9.0 times 10 to the power of 9 newtons times meters squared per coulomb squared, although in some textbooks it's 8.99. This is rounded up. So let's write that in. And this is being multiplied to Q, which is the charge of X. Notice that this is in microcoulombs. It needs to be converted into coulombs, and I'm assuming you know how to convert it. 50.0 microcoulombs to coulombs is this number times 10 to the power of negative 6 coulombs. Now if you don't know how to convert it, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll guide you through it. Now when you're calculating electric field, this value is a scalar, which means that we are not interested in whether it's positive or negative. So if this number happened to be negative, just take the absolute of that value, make it positive because this is just the magnitude of the electric field, as I explained in part one. And that gets divided by the distance between x and this test charge. We have a distance of 0 0.45 meters plus 0 0.30 meters. So I'll write that in. And that's being raised to the power of 2. So together, when you sum that up, you should end up with 0 0.75. Now let's use our calculator. 9.0 times 10 to the power of 9. That gets multiplied to 50.0 times 10 to the power of negative 6. I'm doing this all in one step. So I'll divide that now by 0 0.75. And that's being squared. So we end up getting 800,000. And the units will end up becoming Notice how meters squared will cancel out with this one. The coulombs will cancel out with one of these. We get 8.0 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per coulomb. That right there represents the electric field. And again, it's a repulsion because they're both positive. So expect it to go this way at that magnitude. Now for y, we will do the same thing. We'll calculate the electric field. So I'll repeat most of the calculation from above. Notice that this is negative 10.0. We're not interested in whether it's negative or positive. This is the magnitude of the electric field. So I'll write down positive 10.0 times 10 to the power of negative 6 coulombs. Again, we're not interested in whether it's negative or positive. And the distance now is 0 0.30 meters to the power of 2. Using our calculator again, all I have to do is adjust the distance and adjust the charge. And we get, this time, 1 million. So 1.0 times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb. Let me highlight these two numbers. And since this is negative, and that's positive, that test charge, expect an attraction. So there's a push and pull situation happening here. This one's going to the right, and this one is going to the left towards the negative charge. Now because they're on the same plane, and given that we're not considering vector addition or vector subtraction in this particular example, we will in question number four, this is going this way at this electric field, and it's also going that way at 800,000. The difference is 1.0 times 10 to the power of 6 
newtons per coulomb minus 8.0 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per coulomb. Subtracting these two numbers, you should end up getting 2.0 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per coulomb. So you do have to use a little bit of mathematical intuition here when it comes to combining these two electric fields. And your final answer should be 2.0 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per coulombs. In question number four, which I'll dedicate to part three in this series, will require that you know how to combine vectors at different angles. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any comments or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. We'll see you in part three.